Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Scratch Cybernetics here, and welcome to part two of this tutorial series, how to make a survive-like game in Scratch. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to make the game enemies, the player health bar, and scoring system, and we'll also fix a few bugs. So let's get started. Okay, so before we add any code, let's actually save this as a copy so we can work on that. And then now, I'm gonna go to the tracer sprite, and let's change the size of it, make it a little smaller. And then we could also change the color scheme. Just flip it. So now it's a little bit more accurate. If you've seen the last episode, you'll know that when the player shoots, the gun goes back and forth using a series of move blocks. And if you haven't noticed, when the player is pointing in certain directions, the gun goes side to side or up and down, and not in the required direction. So to change that, let's just get rid of these two move blocks. And then go back to the costumes, and we're just gonna first name this AK to AK1, and then duplicate that, and just simply move it back just a little bit. And then here we could just add a switch costume to right under this wait 0.2 seconds, and another one after the second one. So now let's add a join block and add in the weapon variable into the first part. And then add a 1. And then we could duplicate that a few times. And then in one of them we could add a 2 instead of a 1. And then here we could just drag it all in. So now if we test this, we see that the gun recoil goes in the exact direction needed every time. And it looks a lot smoother. Except I think it's going back a little too far, so... I could just move the costume, the second costume, slightly forward, and then we could see how that looks. There you go. Looks really clean. Alright, let's move on. So now let's add our first enemy. I already pre-drew some art, so I'm gonna import that real quick. So basically, I just duplicated the player character and added hands and added this little dagger. Then I just made a few more costumes for an animation. Okay, so first let's drag in a when clicked, add a hide block, and also a go to. Let's do go to x, say 240, and the y, we don't have to worry about that right now. So go to x 240, add a forever loop. Let's do wait, say pick random 0.2 to 1 seconds, and then also create clone of myself. So now when I start as a clone, Let's do show and set y to pick random. Let's do 131 to negative 131. And then add in a repeat until block. And let's do repeat until touching player or touching tracers. Add in a move, let's say three steps and also point towards player. And then just to top it all off, we can add in a delete this clone at the end of all that. Alright, so now if we test this, now we see that the enemy comes out from the same X position, but it comes out from a random Y position. And they also disappear when you hit them with the tracer, which is exactly how we want it. Now let's add one more thing. This is if you have multiple costumes. So let's drag in a when I start as a clone, add a forever loop, and drag in a switch costume to, let's do E1 wait say 0 0.05 seconds and then we could just duplicate that and change the costume number perfect all right let's move on now let's add an enemy that could actually shoot back at you and as you've probably already guessed i already pre-drew that so i'm gonna import that so basically, all I did was just duplicate the player and the player hands with his gun, and then I added this little recoil animation. Okay, so first let's make three new variables. First one we'll call enemy level, select for all sprites. Second one we'll call enemy shoot. And the third one we'll call e gun or enemy gun lives, also for all sprites. So first let's drag in a one clicked, 
add a set e-gun lives to say for now 25 and set enemy level to 1 now we currently don't have any other enemy levels we just have well level 1 but later on when we do add other enemy levels this variable will be very helpful so now let's add a hide block and a wait say pick random one to four seconds and then also a broadcast attack block now when i receive attack add a forever loop and do forever point towards player and then let's duplicate this and add a set egun lives to 25 and then add in a forever loop and an if then else statement if then egun lives is greater than zero and then add in an if then statement if then not touching edge show else hide and then also let's add in a go to x say 241 and y pick random negative negative 131 to 131 so now let's make the actual attack sequence so let's duplicate this when i receive attack go to x 241 and y pick random negative 131 and yeah i accidentally wrote 141 instead of 241 so let's switch both of those x 241 and then let's add in a show block and add in a set enemy shoot to one and then repeat 10 point towards player and move three steps now we can add a new broadcast block let's do broadcast shoot and then when i receive shoot add in an if then statement and then another if then statement inside of that let's do if then e gun lives or enemy gun lives is greater than zero and then if then enemy shoot equals one So now before we add anything else, let's actually duplicate the tracer sprite and name it E tracers or enemy tracers. Then here we could do go to enemy gunner, point towards player and hide. So now back to the enemy gunner. Let's add in a create clone of E tracers. And then let's add some animation. We'll switch costume to add a join block. Switch costume to join, enemy level, and one. Wait 0.02 seconds. And then we can just duplicate that and do two. Duplicate it again and switch it back to one. And then we could just drag that all in here. Except on the last wait block, let's do wait, pick random, 0.06 to one seconds. So now back to the actual attack sequence. We can add in a wait block and do wait pick random say four to six seconds and then just duplicate this but get rid of the broadcast shoot block and then let's add in a repeat until repeat until touching edge let's do change x change x by negative three and then set enemy shoot to zero hide and wait Wait, pick random, say one to four seconds, and then broadcast attack. Now let's actually test it. If we press the green flag, yeah, the little enemies are coming, and there's the enemy gunner. It's much better. He's actually shooting in the right direction. Now we can just wait for his attack sequence to finish. Yeah, that's really good, but not quite perfect. So let's go back to the enemy gunner and back to his main attack sequence script. In the second repeat 10, let's switch it to repeat 30. Okay, so now let's move on. First, I'm going to import some really simple number costumes that I already pre-drew. So first, let's drag in a one clicked and then we're going to make a new block. Just call it setup and check mark run without screen refresh. So now let's make two new variables. First one we'll call score, set for all sprites, and the second one we'll call number, also set for all sprites. 
drag in a set number to 1 and set score to 0. So now let's drag in a go to XY position block and then simply position your numbers exactly where you would want it to be. And then also add in a hide block. So now let's drag in a repeat block and leave it at repeat 10. And then you can add another one inside of that. And let's do repeat length of score. Create clone of myself and then change X by and this X value is going to depend on the size of your numbers because what this little bit of code here does is it looks at the length of the score or not exactly what the value of the score is but the length of character the score has. It takes that number and it creates that many clones. So first it creates one clone then it changes X by whatever value put in there. So you want to put in a value that has a good amount of space in between the two numbers. And for me that value is 15. And then after that, just drag in a change numbers by one. So now let's define setup. And for that, we could simply take out these four blocks of code and drag it underneath the define setup block. Now let's make a new block. Let's just call it switch costume two, and then add an input and just call that costume. And check run without screen refresh. Now when I start as a clone, add in a show block and a forever loop. And we could add this switch costume to block inside of the forever loop. So now let's add a join block and a letter. So join whatever your numbers are called. Mine is called num and it has this little dash. So join num with that little dash letter number of score. Now let's define the switch costume to block. Let's add in an if then statement. If then not costume equals costume name. Switch costume to costume. And last of all, set size to whatever size you want. Mine are at 450. Now back to the enemy sprite. We could just add in a change score by one right above this delete this clone. And then if we go to the enemy gunner sprite, here we can add in a change score by one, and then we can add in a wait until egun lives is greater than zero. So now let's try it. Hold up. Before we test this, I realized that I made a seemingly small but really bad mistake. Upon pressing the green flag, you are probably really confused and or frustrated as to why the numbers weren't showing up. And I finally found the solution. So let's go back to the score sprite and just delete the number variable. It only has three uses so just delete that and then we're gonna make a number variable again except this time do not check mark for all sprites but check for this sprite only. And then we could just redo all that same code so right under the change x by drag in a change number by one here we can drag in a letter number of score and then here in the define setup set number to one so now we can finally wait hold up there you go so now let's test this if we press the green flag, yes, we see that the numbers show up and it's working almost perfectly. But if you haven't noticed, if you try shooting the enemy gunner, he simply won't die. So to fix that, let's go to the tracer sprite and add in a, when I start as a clone, add in a forever loop and do if then touching enemy gunner. Change E gun lives by negative one and then wait until not touching enemy gunner. And then we could duplicate this and do if touching enemy gunner or touching the edge or touching the enemy. Wait 0 0.01 seconds and then delete this clone. 
And now, before we end this tutorial, let's add the player health bar. So here all I did was just make a white outline and a filled in white bar. And then I slowly made the bar shorter to make it look like the player is losing health. So let's just drag in a when clicked. And then we're going to make a new variable. Just call it health and select for all sprites. And then we can drag in a set health to and the health bar I drew has 12 bars to it, so I'm going to set health to 12. Now let's add in a forever loop and do go to front layer and then switch costume to and we'll do health plus one. And last but not least, add in a go to XY position block. Now back to the player. Here we can drag in a when clicked add a forever loop and an if then else statement and do if then health is greater than zero else drag in a broadcast and we'll do broadcast game over and then here we could drag in an if then statement and put it right underneath the if health is greater than zero and do if then touching enemy or enemy tracers change health by negative one and lastly wait until not touching enemy tracers or enemy and now we can test it once more Perfect. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button, and also please consider subscribing, and tell me what you thought about this video in the comment sections down below. Also, be sure to hit that notifications bell, so you know when my next video comes on. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.